Here we go. All right, so let's preserve our food. Choose ingredients. I think we already have some bear jerky indeed. Let's eat that to get the HP buff. Um, oh no, that's a fungus patch. Not interested in that. We might go south. Uh, yeah, we're here, but we can slam our way through, so... This must not deter us. Or this does not need to deter us, rather. Indeed, here we go. That's just the cool thing about a culture build. Alright, Salamander and a leech were fighting. And the leech got dead, and I got whisked away by the voider. That's a shoot crab. Uh huh. Not crab, crab. And also crab, I guess. Oops, we just slipped and slipped into the other map. Scorpioc. Fine. Alright. Yeah, Punchy Patty is doing quite well for now. But, you know, we're not really... We're not really ready for a lot of stuff yet, so... You know, we don't exactly have great armor. And we don't exactly have... Uh... Hey, teleport me away. Okay. We don't exactly have... We don't have any ranged weapons yet. You know, it's um, we're still kind of lacking in basic stuff. Void is always annoying to fight in melee, obviously, because you just get teleported constantly. Where are you? There you are. But uh, that teleportation takes a long time to to recharge. So usually you have enough time to just go and kill them after that here we go all right so here we are let's go south a little bit more I'm just drawing my basic map here to keep track of where I am because otherwise you know I think that was still before episode 100 but uh I, I got super lost in the underground once, and that was about 10 videos of uh, just being lost in the underground and not finding a way up. That can be troublesome. <laughs> the feral dog killed the ray cat. Dogs and cats do not like each other. That's a pretty straightforward, kind of a, oh yeah, that makes sense, kind of thing. But, uh, yeah. Level 10, nice. That's good. Level 10 before we got back to Joppa. Mirthworms. Oh, you get a bit of diminishing returns now. Mirthworms only give us half the half the stuff. Well, that's alright. Uh, I'm gonna get butchery. We can get harvest tree from, from Joppa if we do the if we, we do the thing. Yes, live and drink, mind dam. Live and drink to you as well. Okay. I'm gonna get Spicer as well. We're just going to do the water ritual once we are. I think we probably need to find a bit more stuff before we can get it, but uh, and it's also just 50 points, so it doesn't really. But yeah, yeah a bunch of mirth ones here. It's only 35 at level 10, but you know, it still adds up. So that's good. I think after this screen, I'm going to get out of the underground, go back to Joppa. So, for those of you who are just tuning in, um, when I started out, the the warden killed the quest giver, so we did not get the like immediately. I don't know what was happening there, but uh, that happened and murdered a bunch of other residents of Joppa. So I had a bit of a dispute there. But this prevented us from getting the Red Rock quest. So uh, we're going to play this run without doing the Red Rock quest. I guess. 
I mean, it's fine, you know. I just went down here to do a bit of underground exploration and to get the miner's helmet and the sphere of negative weight, you know. Just the basic stuff. <coughs> and the credit wedge, because uh, we're playing a true kin. So getting cybernetics credits makes sense. Haven't played a true kin in a while before, before this. Before the last character that is, which is the same as this one. All right. Okay, so these guys are probably now going to go and murder the warden and attack the warden. No, there's just no. They are. I think they're just searching for for stuff now. Um, is there work to be found here? Yeah. Speak with Mehmet by the water vine patch. Thing is, Mehmet has been killed by your buddy, the warden. So, let's do water ritual. Villages of Shabitum went down. Hinton of Bela went up. Huh. Because they admire the elder. Minus 40. Hmm. Let's share one secret. Uh, we still don't have enough for harvestry. And the problem is that we can't... You know, we can't do the water ritual with Mehmet now, so we might not get harvestry this way. <coughs> we might not get harvestry this way. Nah, we won't, because we can only get a maximum of 60 out of that. The one way to get it would be to... Uh, wait, forgot something. Um, the one way to get it would be to get Joppa up another way. You know, by killing a boss somewhere that is hated by Joppa folks. And that's kind of the only way. Here's your knickknack. So you can have a bunch of dumb grenades. So the freeze grenade. Yes. And well, let's keep the defoliant for now. That can be kind of useful. All right. Do you have anything interesting? No, you don't. Okay. All right. So. What shall we do? We can do the Rust Wells and the historic site in one swoop. How about that? Are grenades useful? Uh, yeah, they could be useful. I don't really use them, but that is actually kind of a bad habit of mine. I've never really gotten into the habit of using them I just I just stockpile them usually <laughs> but uh, they can be useful for specific situations holographic shale interesting so that just interesting huh that's an interesting historic site so let's just explore this for a bit kind of rough for visibility, but uh, yeah. Yeah, the EMP is really good when you're an Esper, for example, right? They are, they're really useful for specific situations. You know, they can be useful to get some fungus out of the way, stuff like that, but uh, <laughs> I usually use the sower seeds that you get from... Um, Yeah. Uh, the sower seeds to destroy a bit of the sludge in uh, in Golgotha to not get um, you know to not get glot rot or anything. That's kind of useful. Yeah, sometimes that happens. I think it was also not the very first time that happened. I think I've seen that before, like the the warden killing the quest giver. Um, but you know, I was kind of too late. By the time I noticed what was happening, uh, he was frozen because the warden has freezing hands. All right, let's go down and check out the Neberuk steeple. 
problem is when uh, when they are frozen, you cannot talk to them. So uh, and he was killed while he was frozen, I think. So yeah, that did not work out. But you know, we're now gonna do this without the uh, without the Red Rock quest. I don't know if there's any later dependencies on the Red Rock quest being finished because the <laughs> the actual quest chain is just uh, starts with the the Rustwells thing from Argive, right? So, not sure. So who are you? Loved by Snapjaws, hated by the villagers. Hey, hated by the villagers of Joppa. We might get ha get Harvest Tree after all. Ha! Ha! <laughs> just been talking about it. Good, fantastic. So, let's just slap that guy. Hey, there's another Snapjaw boss. That's cool. Let's get some reputation here. Cabal of the Luminous Devil. Villagers of Joppa went up by 205. Yeah, we're gonna get Harvestry. Reputation with the Gersh changed by 95. Interesting. Okay. So, who are you? Disliked by winged mammals. Fellowship of the Wardens. And Villagers of Kash. Cool. Yeah, that's good stuff to get some. Oh yeah, you're doing some damage. Um, you have a Carbide Short Sword, yeah. And at this point, yeah, it's not that. What do I have Conk on? Three. And Flurry on two. Now let's do a Flurry and let's Conk. And have that guy stunned. Um, it's just injured. Yeah, that's a strong one. That's a strong Snapjaw. Buddy. Do we have a Self Injector? We do. Uh, I'm just going to use it right now. Your feet are dismembered. Oh no! Oh no. Oh no. Wow, that was a snap jaw. Um, problem is now we are super slow. And I was, I was killed. I should have been more careful here. But that was that was interesting. That was the strongest snap jaw I've ever fought. And I got my feet dismembered. <laughs> cool. <coughs> um, we're gonna replay. Uh, yeah, I mean, such it goes. I could have handled that a lot better, by the way. That was not, you know. It's, that's one of my worst habits when playing card is that I don't take my time in tough fights, you know. You can just, you know, the, the way, that's like the carbide legs, yeah. Um, the way to play roguelikes, essentially, is to take stock after every turn, and that becomes really important, especially in Cave of Cut, when you have tough things fighting you. You know, just take stock after every turn and decide and make an informed decision about what you're gonna do. And that's kind of the way to win these games. And uh, I'm a lazy asshole, so I often don't do that. And so stuff like this happens. And, uh, you know, and then I get angry comments about that. Well, not angry comments. Usually I only get ex comments that explain this to me, which uh, is good. I'm, I appreciate that, but, you know, a lot of this stuff I know I'm just... Oopsie daisy. I just tend to be kind of a... Kind of a dumbass, I guess. I apologize to everyone. Strange tubes. Metal folding chair. Only useful to take apart or to give Argive. So that's what we're gonna do. Do you have anything interesting? Let's lugs. Chain boots. Kind of nice. Ring mail, nah. Masterwork desert rifle. Huh? That would be useful to have. But yeah, no. Let's just get rid of the nonsense. I'm gonna keep that. Yeah. Trade complete. Yeah. 
when you're playing dungeon crawl stone soup. Yeah, that's a classic example for that, right? It's, you know... <coughs> I've played a lot of Rogue and Natak back in the day. Back in my youth. And, uh... If you wanna, if you wanna win Rogue... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it always sounds like a lame excuse. But that's also kind of a thing when you're recording yourself and you're talking about stuff while playing and you're, you know, kind of multitasking while playing. You play a lot more sloppily than... At least that's the case with me. I play a lot more sloppily. Like games in general, when I'm... Uh, when I'm streaming or recording, you know, looking at the chat, thinking about what to say. It's different. You, you're, you're, just, you're just in a different cadence when you play for an audience. Also, I tend to just rush things along because I don't want things to be too... It would be more interesting if I could get myself to take my time and I, I this is something I need to constantly remind myself especially when I'm recording um, to just take your time there's no need to rush stuff and you know it does not make for a better video when I rush stuff but it it's just yeah it's just kind of a little brain thing because you know <coughs> It took me, like, taking your time took me pretty far, for example, in Natek. I've never actually ascended in Rogue, uh, and also not in Natek, but I, I got pretty far in Natek. Natek is such a specific game, it's such a different game as well. Like, ascending in Natek requires you to just know the specific things that you need to ascend and uh, you know and then also be really good Cave of Card is a lot more a lot more freewheeling I guess which I like more I really like that better but uh, yeah <coughs> okay so let's do this again Star Apple, let's look. Good. Oh shit. There's two turrets here. Uh, we're going to... I think I'm going to not... I'm going to not. Because we only have 20 health. Even if they are just musket turrets, they might be a problem right now. So we're just going to leave them there. Um, especially because I can't fight them without both of them being able to shoot at me. And... Uh, yeah, that's that. Whoa! The slumberling was awake, and I'm dead. So, so much for that. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you know what? We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick with this character for, for the time being. I'm going to play punchy folks until it's time to patch, and then we're going to do something different, I guess. But, um, or maybe we're going to try something different at some point. Yeah, that was an unlucky slumberling encounter. Happens. Happens to the best of us. Uh, we're going to go with 18 intelligence, 16 ego. Yeah, let's do one more strength. So Child of the Hearth, yeah, that will start us out with 24 strength, that's good. Uh, <coughs> an old tome mod. A Dragon Ball themed Tales of Magial. <laughs> or was it still Tales of Middle Earth? I could never quite get into tome. I've played it for like 30 hours. And I've tried it again and again, but it's just so fiddly to me. Uh, still, Tales of Middle-earth, yeah. 
Like, Tome 4 is really cool. Like, there's so much stuff in that game. It's, like, it's staggering how much stuff is in that game. But I don't like playing it. <laughs> I just don't enjoy it. Adam is great, yeah. Adam is very good. But I don't, you know, for some reason I don't enjoy Tome. It's too fiddly. I don't like the cooldown systems for... I don't know, it's just... And it's, it's so fiddly. <laughs> I guess that's kind of a... Kind of a thing with me. <laughs> I don't like fiddly stuff because I'm lazy as hell. <coughs> okay. Well, you know, no wonder I like the Carbide Hand Bones build. It was probably the least fiddly things. So you don't even need to worry about weapons, you know. It's kind of the least fiddly thing you can play in case of cut. Punchy. Um. Petunia. Yeah, Adam is great. Adam is, um, the only reason why I haven't really, um, sunk into Adam yet is that I just n never really found the time to actually, you know, Adam is a game that I want to play at some point and want to really get into. The thing is, to really get into Adam is kind of a huge time commitment, the same as Caves of Cut, for example, is a huge time commitment. Um... Yeah. Yeah, Tome is a fantastic game, again, you know. I also, I, I like, because I think it's so cool, I I bought the game multiple times. Like, I bought it when it came out on Steam, like, way before that, I, I just donated money to the developer, and I don't, <laughs> Tome is just, you know, like, it was roguelike of the year for a lot of... For a lot of years and um, definitely deserved, you know. Still, I, I never enjoyed playing it, and that's that's on me, right? That's not an indictment of the game. Okay. Uh, we could use studded leather, but uh, that's not for now. Get rid of that stuff. Going to get the lead slugs. Hmm, a desert rifle again. Cannot afford it though. <coughs> At some point, also, uh, Case of a Card just took up all my roguelike playing. You know, like after NetHack, that's kind of the thing I got into the most. At this point, it's probably my longest played game of all time. Like if you count all Doom maps together or Doom wards together as Doom, as one game, then that might still be more than Caves of Cut. But, uh... And yeah, the original Guild Wars was also... <laughs> I played a ton of the original Guild Wars. But that's kind of it for games that I really fell into. Um, okay, let's do this. Did I get the quests? Okay, I did not get this one, so let's get it before Argive murders that guy. Because if he... is... Like, if, uh, if the Zealot goes left a little bit too far and gets seen by Argive. Argive will rush out and murder him. Because he's very annoyed with the Zealots. Which I can totally get. You know, I can understand that. Murder might be a bit harsh, you know, but... Uh, but Argive himself is also... <coughs> a very... specific kind of character. Let's say. All right. What like what does the clock say? One moment. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to play for a little bit longer, and then I'm probably going to stop the stream. 
Fungicide grenade, there we go. Well, that can be kind of useful for fungus, because fungus can be pretty annoying, especially if you have, if you need to get through an area that has a lot of fungus in it. Did I equip the... I did not even buy the glow sphere. Let's go back in the darkness, which is maybe not the best thing to do. And let's get ourselves that glow sphere. And you have two glow spheres. Mm. Being a bit decadent today, are we, Warden? All right. Okay, let's do this again. Beat a bracelet, okay. <coughs> okay, maybe I should actually... So, this is my... Uh, for this run, I'm going to try to take my time with this, you know, to not be sloppy, to not just rush into stuff. How about that? I'm going to remind myself again and again, there's no need to do that. Let's just do it, you know? I have a bit of time with this run until the next patch comes. Hmm. Glow pads? They are important. I think I did not find out that they are important, sorry. Or oh, impotent. <laughs> Oops, there's a lot of shooty stuff. Let's just go back, recharge a bit, I'll just take them out. Get behind cover. I've never really... Oh, Boskin gloves. We... Oh no, we do have steel gauntlets, don't we? Yeah. Um, no, I never really paid much attention to glow pads. I have, you know, at some point there was a very specific globe pad merchant that came through a space-time rift. Um, which I think is a was a specific character. And I traded with him. But I'm not sure... I'm, I, th I don't think I've ever found that in the actual world. I never thought about that until now. If that's what you mean? I don't know. Maybe there's some cool glow pad action going on. Small box. Back on my iron. Okay. No, I think that was just a snapshot that got killed by um by young ivory. Okay. That was it? Okay. Hey, then I and then I did find that out, but I, I didn't really find out about it about about its significance. So I just remember that that was kind of a fun thing. Some glow pad dungeons look peculiar. Yeah, I don't know. That's just one of the things I like about Caves of Cut is just the you know the possibility space it opens. It's just, you know, there's this thing, it, it might be something really cool. It might not be, but uh, you wouldn't put it past the game to just have a crazy weird thing there. And oftentimes it has. You know, and that's kind of a... kind of a ro roguelike thing anyways. Hey, Laborer Security Guard, that's nice. Like, it's not that useful if you have slam and have high, uh... 
<coughs> high strength. Because you can generally just slam through a bunch of walls, but uh, still pretty useful. Okay. Also, if everything fails, it's worth a lot. So the security cards, they were they are worth a pretty penny. Alright. Okay, that's that. Hmm. Hello bear. Oh, come on, all right. So... We're just going to put everything into strength, because we're starting with two more intelligence. Uh, and we're gonna get bludgeon for now. So the next few level ups we're going to save up for dual wield. I'm going to prioritize dual wield before getting backswing and conk. And we're gonna get that after that. Just get... Yeah, to just kind of hit the ground running to get the basic stuff out of the way early. Alright. Iron Mace now. Okay. You know, I might actually do some. I think I kind of need to train my brain to not be as sloppy. So I should actually approach these snapjaw fights with a bit more care as well. You know, not just run through and just slam on that num block, you know? So, hey, you're shooting me, that's okay. Also, probably found a leather cap at this point that I didn't take. Yeah, here we go. I need to get that armor up. Okay, let's go further down. Here we are at the waterlogged tunnel. Okay, so we have three snap jaws and one salt hopper. Let's see if we can have some fools coming after us. Hey, the salt hopper killed the snap jaws. Well, that makes sense. Probably took some damage in the in the proceedings. So that was good. Our dagger. You know, I need to train myself to assess every situation properly. Is what I'm saying, I guess. So that's a blaze injector. That can be useful. And an acid gas grenade. Not that useful, but uh, you know, we might use that to give it to Argive. Okay. The saloon of Mishan. So we have a new historic site location. Bloodstained neck ring. You have injected yourself with something, yeah, with a rubber gum tonic. Doesn't help you very much. The rubber gum tonic, I always, I always have to think about. That one guy from that anime, what was it? Like the the pirate stuff. Jeez, that was on TV around here. Yeah. completely escaping me right now. There was an anime thing where there was a guy that had just a rubber body. Jeez, I'm blanking on that. It's super well known as well. One Piece. Yeah, that was it. Never really watched it, but... Uh... <coughs> I remember everyone having like fun weird faces I think that's enough <laughs> also not really interested in ever in ever watching that so that's that okay all right it doesn't seem to be anywhere else to explore indeed so we at the waterlogged tunnel oh and famished without that meal okay so we're at 258 
we're level five, but we're gonna get some decent, uh, some decent experience once we start fighting the, you know, the, the worms, the no worms, and the, and the crabs. <coughs> so we're gonna get up to, we're gonna get the, we're gonna get to three hundred. And get basic dual wield pretty soon. So the null worms will start one further north. Because right now this is still the essentially still the chopper area, so we only have these guys. And uh, one further north is essentially in the next cluster of nine, in the next map tile, just uh, in the underground, you know. At some point, you kind of, you kind of get a, get behind the way, or you kind of get a feeling for the way the the world is structured. You know, it is procedurally generated, and stuff is different every time. But it does follow certain rules, and these rules are, you know, and you can understand these rules. Okay, boom, rest up, keep going. Okay, weird artifact, a telescopic monocle, interesting. Magnifying monocle, I don't know what that actually does. Let's just pick it up, and a cracked lens, maybe the monocle was originally a pair of glasses kind of cool that these two were together in one box that implies a story okay all right oh, yeah I think I think I might be I might be done with the stream pretty soon because uh, I need to eat something oh there's a electric snail and a spark tick, which is interesting for this point in the game. Ah, come on, can we get, can we get it? It's still fine. Huh. Stun that thing. We're not really doing a lot of damage here, is my problem. Um, we don't really have a lot of things we can do. Can stun it a lot and wound it. Yes, and killed. Okay. <coughs> Electric snail corpse. You can actually Oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh fuck me. That's a bad one. Oh no the confusion and we're getting pelted by stuff as well. Mm hmm We don't know where to go because of the stuff. Okay, let's go south. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think that was a uh, seeker boss. Shit. That's trouble. Might just stay away from that stuff for the time being. So that's where the snails came from. Huh. Okay, we're just going to leave those guys over there. Okay, there you are. We can actually see. Um, uh, yeah, tough, right. Servant of Pato. Seekers of the Sightless Way. Indeed. I think we're just going to skip those over there. Oh, fuck, slumberling. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Man, this is a tough one. Ah! The slumberling went around and killed me. Okay. I guess. Okay, this is a point where I should probably stop. So uh, I'm going to continue playing soon, and uh, I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to play this in a mindful way. I'm going to think about my steps and so on. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a that was a rough map. That was a pretty rough map. Thanks you all for watching. Thank you for hanging out in the chat. 
Um, all this stuff is going to go up on YouTube as an archive, as multiple archives, you know, over the next few days. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stream again soon, probably tomorrow at some point. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and see you around. <laughs>